Now, in the previous two videos, I've shown you how to differentiate sine x and cosine x from first principles using the small angle approximations. That's probably my preferred route through. However, you will see um, in mark schemes and in exam questions as well that they can then say you uh, can assume these two limits to be the case. So that as h tends to 0, sine of h over h tends to 1. And cosine of h take away 1 over h tends to 0. Now, to prove those is a little bit beyond our pay grade at this point. Okay, So it's really about making sure that you can use those facts as part of the differentiation for first principles. Okay, So these may be given to you in the exam. And I have seen exam questions already that have used those, have told you those, you can use those facts in order to differentiate sine or cosine from first principles. So I'll show you how they get used. So y equals sine x. So f of x is equal to sine x. So the limit, so or rather d by dx of sine x is equal to the limit as h tends to 0 of f of x plus h, so sine of x plus h take away f of x, so take away sine of x, all over h. OK, so this whole bit here will be identical to how we did it with a small angle approximations. So the limit as h tends to 0, split this up using the compound angle formula. So sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h, take away sine x, all over h. OK, so at this point, what we want to do is we want to factorise the sine x's and the cosine x's. So we'll have the sine x of cosine h take away 1 plus cosine x of sine h, or times sine h, all over h. I'll put that in a bracket. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to split uh, this up into two limits. Um, this is a perfectly valid move. OK, I'm not going to prove it here, but you can look up a proof for it. So I can split this up into the limit of sine x times cosine h take away 1 over h plus the limit as h tends to 0 of cosine x sine of h over h. Now, because the sine x and the cosine x don't involve h, um, you can take them outside of the limit because they have no, um, there's no effect in doing that. Okay, they're just like multipliers or coefficients. So we'll have the sine x, and then we've got the limit as h tends to zero of the cosine h take away one over h, plus cosine x times the limit as h tends to 0 of the sine h over h. Now the limit as h tends to 0 of cosine h take away 1 over h, as given up here, is just 0. And cosine x is being multiplied by the limit as h tends to 0 of sine h over h, which we've got up here is 1. And so we have the derivative of sine x being cosine x. And that's how you can use, utilise the limits in order to differentiate sine from first principles.